Admiral, manufacturer of the world's most powerful television receivers and maker of table model radios. Admiral portable radios. Radio phonograph combinations. A complete line of conventional refrigerators. And the famous Admiral dual temp refrigerator. Admiral electric ranges with flexo heat. Full line of television combinations. And the finest of them all, the famous three foot theater. Admiral presents Lights Out. isn't it? How people who should know better will persist in clinging to something which can only lead to evil for those who handle it. This little trinket, for example, can lead to extraordinary happenings under the spell of the Fontsville curse. trying to tell you how to write. But what? But no, darling, we haven't been married long enough. Come on, tell me, what's wrong with it? Well, it, it's overdone, it's too talky. Men on the point of stabbing somebody don't take all that time just to talk about it. But he loves her, I've got to show him I fighting know, against killing not, her. But not, and now you know, and I can't let you live with that knowledge. Darling, it's right out of a D movie. What Lady Deirdre Fonsville considers... I am not Lady Deirdre Fonsville anymore. Just plain Mrs. D. Darrow. How do you spell this straw? D-I-S-T-R-A-U-G-H-T. Oh, Thanks. we're almost there. I can hardly wait for you to see it. You know, I'm expecting a cross between the Tower of London and the Chamber of Horrors. <laughs> and that's exactly what you're going to get at the House of Baron Fonsville. Say, that'd make a good title for a book. The House of Baron Fonsville. Oh, no, you don't. I have your sacred promise sworn on a stack of royalties that this is your last mystery novel for a whole year. Just remember what the doctor said. Mm. Battle fatigue and hangnail are one and the same to him. Nevertheless, he said you needed complete rest. And nothing on your mind but me. I'm not even sure I should let you finish working on the book you're writing. Now look here, darling. Among my other bad habits, I'm fond of eating. We'll eat when I sell the castle. With that old pile of stones? You Americans needn't think that we English can't get rid of a white elephant when we have them. Mm. Oh, we're almost there. Now remember, be nice to Aunt Mendicant. Who could be nice to anyone named Mendicant? Well, she stayed on in that old house all these years by herself. Hasn't cost me a penny enough, Keith. Mm -hmm. Pretty big of her. If you let her live in the house rent-free and pay the taxes for her, what does she want? She's an old woman and she hasn't got anyone else to turn to. No, I used to be so frightened of her when I was little. Even when I was in a room full of people. Why, did she lock you in the dungeon on bread and water? <laughs> you can make fun of her if you like. Just you bump into her one night. And she stalks the draft before the Fonso Manor. You'll see what I mean. Mm. The Murder of Mrs. Mendicant by Paul Widden Darrow. Now, Paul. Oh, we're there. Oh, oh now remember, be nice to Aunt Mendicant. I'll give her a big kiss if it'll make you happy. Oh, Aunt Mendicant. Hello, Aunt Mendicant. You're late. So is the train. Uh, Auntie, this is my husband. Hmm. Is that all the luggage? The rest is being sent. Come, there's a bad fog coming up. I've opened the east wing. I think you'll be comfortable. Cran 
candle like a fire. We should keep you warm tonight. Tomorrow, I'll see about the furnace. But, Aunt Mendicaba, I wrote you ten days ago that we were coming. I thought perhaps you might want to change your mind. Knowing what you do. Why? Oh, Aunt Mendicaba, the room looks beautiful. Who's laughing, boy? Sir, you are speaking of the ancestor I love. That is a portrait of the fourth Baron von Spiel. Mm, put a row of numbers under him and he passed for Jack the Ripper. <laughs> yes. But are those who say he did murder? Oh? His own sister. Early one morning, she was found in this bed. Strangled. <laughs> Her husband was found hanging on these doors. Hopelessly insane. <laughs> he kept on saying, let me in. I've done it. Let me in. I've done it. How do you know it wasn't her own husband who killed her? Why? Because of the Baron Ponsfield. Oh. Tell me more. The Baron was a woman hater, it seems. Put a curse on the entire female line of Ponsfield. Is that supposed to be a joke? <laughs> if there's anything you want, I'll not be far away. Ponsville girls all have a curse on them, eh? So the legend goes, we're all supposed to die horribly in our days. <laughs> Nobody want to kill you in that. They'd be much more after that. Uh, oh. Oh. oh! I thought perhaps you'd want this. Oh, oh well, yes. Yes, by all means. Thank you, Aunt Mendicott. Good night. Good night. What the devil's that? The seal of the house of Pompsville. You're the lord of the manor now. It's the custom. Come on. No, no. I don't... This was designed by Baron Pompsville himself. He has his motto on it. Hmm. Vengeance is all. All is vengeance. Huh. Must have been a friendly soul. Well, it's yours to do with as you wish. I am going to make myself irresistible. Ah, uh, you put that on and you'll suffer the consequences. <laughs> Dee? Is there a radio in here somewhere? Heavens no. We only got the phone and lights two years ago. Just be thankful for modern plumbing. That's funny. You're ravishingly beautiful. Dee, tell me something. Well, what is it, Paul? I thought I heard some music around music? here somewhere. It seemed to be coming from that wardrobe. And those costumes, they must be worth a fortune. What costumes? Why... 
Oh, boy. I need more rest than I thought I did. You certainly do. Now, come to bed, darling. I want to get something to read. Read? Ah, here we are. The story of the House of Ponsville. Now I'll find out what sort of family I married into. Paul Widden Darrow, if you're going to sit up all night and read that musty old book. Peace, woman, peace. keep this pendant, you can come to my party. I've been waiting for you, too. Isn't he a handsome one? Do have him come. Say you'll come and dance with me. You do want to, don't you? Won't you, uh, step in? He's got a wife. wife. He's, He's got, got a wife. wife. He, he can't come in. He's, He's got, got a wife. wife. Oh, you've got a wife. What a pity. Why don't you kill her? Kill her! Kill her! Kill her! Kill her! Kill her! She's an evil, hideous thing. Look. A bat! Oh. She's a thing of evil. Get rid of her. It's so simple. No. No! Not even for me. Not even for me. No. No! <laughs> oh, what a pity. Then you can't come in. Oh. <laughs> Fantastic dream. At least it, it seemed like a dream. I looked over at you and you be were a bat. You'll be all right, darling. Come to bed. Do you think I ought to call Helen and tell her we can't come to her party tomorrow night? I don't think you, you'll be right for a party. Huh? No, I, I'll, I'll be all right. Well, it would disappoint her if we couldn't go. She's been counting on it ever since I wrote her that we were coming. Are you sure you feel up to a party? Yes, I'll, I'll be all right. Don't stay up too late, darling.
Remember, dear boy, if you want to come to my party, you must first kill your wife. Yes. Yes, Helen, it was lovely. It was so much fun to see all my old friends there. When tonight? Oh, no, no, I'm afraid not. Paul's a little under the weather. No, nothing serious, I think. It, it all has something to do with that reoccurring dream of his. You know, the one he was telling about at the party? He wakes up utterly exhausted. That's exactly what I'm going to do. We're trying to get him to stay in bed like pacifying a caged lion. What? The house? Oh, well, a prospective fire is coming on Thursday. It looks like a sale from here. Yes, yes, Helena, I'll call you. Goodbye. <gasps> oh, Nindicap, please knock when you enter this room. I'm sorry. It's, it's unnerving to look up all of a sudden and, and find somebody in the room. Have you been talking to my husband? About what, Deidre? Filling his head with those ridiculous stories about the old Baron. He asked me questions. I've given him answers. Well, I wish you wouldn't. He's, he's very excitable. Stories like that stir his imagination. He's been sleeping badly and having nightmares. I don't want you to tell him anything more about the house, do you hear? As you wish. Oh. <laughs> Aunt Mendica, I, I, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to jump on you like that. <laughs> ah, I understand. What are you doing? Getting rid of laughing, boy. I don't like the way he dominates this room. Leave him there. I do. Oh. Oh. Oh, darling. Darling, please let me call a doctor. I don't want a doctor. I'm all right. You're not all right, Paul. You're continually upset. You're not eating or sleeping well. If I wake up once more and find you pounding on this wardrobe door, I'll... I'll... Yes? Darling, darling, you said that every time you pick up this pendant, you hear that music. It seems that way. Pick it up now, Paul. No! Here, take it. That's nonsense. Not if you really believe I'm it. I'm tired and upset, and the novel isn't going well, and those blasted nightmares. Tell me more about them, darling. Well, it always seems that I want desperately to go to a party they're having on the other side of that wardrobe. It always looks so inviting. I remember frantically wanting to go. But the condition for admission always seems to be... Yes, yes, go on, darling, go on. The admission is... is killing you. But somehow you, you don't seem like you at all. You seem to represent something I have to kill. Something evil. I hear them whispering, saying over and over again, kill her, kill her, kill her, kill her. And the hardest thing to understand is that I seem to think it's worth it. <laughs> I bet those lie down and tell me all boys could make something out of that. And this pendant is always somewhere near you when this happens. Yes, I... I seem to touch it or pick it up somehow. It always seems to start the thing going. Then we must get rid of it. 
somehow this pendant has a dreadful association now with don't you start that amateur psychiatry don't be ridiculous of course you can't get rid of it it's a valuable antique Yes, darling. I got up too fast after that last siege in the hospital. I'm going to take it easy for a year. I'll do whatever you tell me. Well, we'll put this back in its box. No. Uh, put it there. I mustn't start giving in to things, making it easy on myself. Try to get them safe, darling. in time for the fun. Oh, pretty boy, pretty boy. Is he coming tonight? Are you? Come to the party. Yes. Come, come, to, the the party. Party. come, come to, to the party. Come to the party. 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 One moment. Party. You must kill her first, you know. It's a little rule we have. No married men. Or had you forgotten? No married men allowed, my pretty. No married men allowed, my pretty. Why don't you... Kill the evil one. Look at her. Why, Why don't, don't you? you? Why, Why don't, don't you? you? Why don't you? Why don't you? I must kill it to go to the party. people who should know better will persist in clinging to something which can only bring evil to those who handle it. Here is something well worth remembering. Next time you go to the food store, you can shop to your heart's content if you have a big new 11 cubic foot Admiral refrigerator like this.
There's room for everything in the new Admirals because they're designed with no wasted space. Look, the freezer chest is full width, holds 60 pounds of frozen food. The cold compartment is full length, cold clear to the floor with 20 square feet of shelf area. And on the door itself are these extra shelves for bottles, jars, fruit, and eggs, plus the handy butter keeper. Simply no wasted space in this great new refrigerator by Admiral, maker of tomorrow's products today. again on Lights Out next Monday night. Meanwhile, be sure to see Admiral's fast-moving variety show, Stop the Music, over another television network. Consult your newspaper for time and station. This is Ralph Ball bidding you good night for Admiral. Admiral.